I was on holiday in Canada earlier on in the year and I found this terrific little retro shop selling die-cast toys mainly Matchbox, Dinky, Corgi, a few American types as well um, and uh, they're all fairly new and pricey to be honest so I was talking away to the guy and I said um, I'm really into kind of renovating, restoring things for you in that order. So he reached under the counter and he pulled out this box. There must have been 50 matchbox cars in various state of poor paint. He said, give you three for ten bucks in a Canadian accent. Um, so I looked through and this is one of the ones I found. It's on a one one thirty scale. It's a single called a single big driving wheel and it's called the Duke of Connaught and I'd like a wee go at trying to restore this back to its original condition <laughs> Hey there YouTubers, welcome to another servicing video from 6233, six, forgot my name there. Although it's not actually a servicing video, it's more a restoration video. This is in fact a Matchbox model. It's a series called Models of Yesteryear, where I think if I can turn it around this way, you might be able to see that. And this particular number is Y14, it's a locomotive and it's called the Duke of Connaught. It's a 422 and Matchbox produced these in the 60s. Um, for some reason or other they never got round to actually supplying a tender although I can see a hole at the back of the base and I think that they had intended to produce a tender for it but never actually got there. As you can see the boiler and cab assembly have come loose from the main chassis mounting. Uh, colour wise brown the main colour with some gold uh, flashes here and here and I think that's meant to be a copper chimney on the boiler mainly a green color with a gold dome bell a dome in the middle and a whistle top there other than that so uh, other than that those are the colors brown and green with some gold trim there's also the boiler plate, the boiler plate door, sorry, the boiler door at the front has also been painted in gold and I think that can be removed, we shall discover. Now, you're thinking, why is SORT 6233 dealing with matchbox? I'll tell you why, because I've been kind of hooked on die-cast restoration and there's a few good guys around out there uh, you'll probably know most of them the ones that come to my mind uh, Tony's die Matchbox Garage there's, Joe, uh, there's Diecast Resto there's Time Rinder but of course to me the king of them all is Marty Marty's Matchbox Makeovers if I've missed any of you guys out, please forgive me. There are a lot of guys doing a lot of good work. I'm not in competition. In fact, consider this, if you like, a little homage. Step number one is I'll see if I can remove this boiler door. It looks as if it's fitted inside, so I'm hoping it should just pry open very gently. Reminds me of taking the back off a watch. Well, there's a little notch just visible in here. There we go. I'm sure that'll be able 
to pull out. There we go. There's a boiler door assembly in gold. And that leaves this as one complete assembly. I don't see anything else that can come off. So, a bit of paint stripper to replace all that. And for the main chassis, looking underneath, it seems to be held on by two rivets here and here. And I would imagine the axles will be held under that. So I'm just going to get my drills, which I specifically bought for match talk, Matchbox Restoration, and take these out. And the usual practice seems to be to drill into these posts to create a tapped hole for screws to replace the rivets once it's built up again. I'm being very careful at this point as this is the first time I've ever tried this and I want to try and make a good uh, job of it. So I'm going to do it quite gently and as I drill I'll clear the filings away of the swarf and just keep doing until I feel that I'm deep enough. Whoops! I've applied too much pressure and my drill has gone. My first reaction to the drill breaking was that was a disaster, but then I realised that I could fit the, the, the good end into the chuck with only a small piece protruding and that would allow me to drill into the rivet post the vibration has loosened the main wheels here so I don't need to take them off later on so all I have to do is very carefully drill down until the drill bit meets the chassis. It's about there. And I think that's about three millimeters deep, which will be good for the screw. Now to remove the top of the rivet posts. to really free the chassis. I obviously have never done this before so I don't really know how far down I can drill so as before I'm just going to take it a little bit at a time until I learn more Then I'm going to keep experimenting until the rivet is freed. Is that it coming? Is that it coming? I imagine that all the other guys who are doing this must have had this experience at the beginning. Just trying to question. Oh, there we go. That's fine. So I now know it works. So now for the rear post. Let me try that. I feel it giving there, so yeah. So there's the base plate, black on the underside, 
bare metal on that side. I'll probably do the whole thing black. Quite thin, easily malleable piece of plate. And the wheels, which I think are plastic on the axles. The axles are good, it's not like some of these other die cast restorations where the axles seem to get all rusty. These don't look too bad at all. I think I can use them directly. Okay, let me put those to one side. And there's still a, a front axle maintained under a separate clip, so I'm hoping that that might just unclip easily. There we go. Nicely. So there's the main chassis. Quite a complex uh, assembly because it's all one piece. These are the rivet posts, wheel guards, wheel arches, and you can just make out the original um, original decals. Uh, I've actually managed to purchase a new set of decals for the wheel arches. And overall brown, except there is gold trim on the axle boxes on each side and these two sections here I'm not sure offhand what they would be but I'll try and find out and I'll need a brown so I'm actually going to the model shop this afternoon or one of them and I'll just investigate a brown paint doesn't look particularly um, special brown paint so I think I'll get something that says brown, I should be okay similarly for the boiler green probably a Brunswick green maybe a Brunswick green and some gold paint and thinking ahead I'm probably going to have to hand paint these at this section here, the two gold boxes there, and even just touch up the boiler door. Well, I tentatively drilled again, and eventually I got it down to a depth of about five millimeters. And then I tapped it, and now I found that I drilled and tapped my first ever hole in a die cast model. In fact, it's the first time in my life I've ever used a tap set to drill a threaded hole for a screw. So I'm quite chuffed at the grand old age of 21 plus a lot. I've done that, so I can take that off as well. So all I have to do now is concentrate on this. My shortened drill bit. Now to see if this works as well. So M2 Phillips headed screw. 
should line up with the thread and in it goes perfect depth in the other die cast uh, videos I've been watching this is the stage where they take the separate pieces and apply some paint stripper and a couple of methods that we have seen so I'm going to have a wee go at one of these methods this of course is my very first attempt and I've got to the stage of applying paint stripper and the method I'm going to use is using this paint stripper here from the local DIY store so let me try and make sure I can open this up oops I've got one of these foolproof openings oh yeah you push it down then you turn it that's right push it down then turn it here we go and it seems to be liquidish I've never looked at this before so let me just try and pour a little bit on gloopy try and smear it all over No, it's not my wife's toothbrush. That's one of my old ones. So I'm just going to leave that for a few minutes. And we'll see how that goes. Well, it's been sitting in this bath for about five minutes so I want to see if it has having any effect and as I rub there I think you can see there's very little happening so either it's tough paint or it's not the right material okay I'll leave it a bit longer and see how it goes my locomotive sitting in this a uh, paint stripper for about an hour and a half so I'm going to try it again and see if there's any change and to be honest I'm not really convinced that this is working very well there's a slight removal of brown paint around the wheel dome. Um, but other than that, this just is not moving at all. So, Matchbox Paint 1, DIO Paint Stripper, no. I may have to try another method. Well this is uh, what's happened so far. There is some flaking of the brown paint but in general it could take quite a while for this to dissolve. So I'm going to try the second method commonly in use. That is some boiling water which I've just taken off the boil and I'm going to drop the chassis into this jar I 
and apply some caustic soda. There is not a lot of reaction now and you can see the brown paint floating on the surface. So I'm just going to leave that for a little while and see what happens. Meanwhile, I was doing some research on the bonnet and I came across a website dedicated to Matchbox and it lists virtually every matchbox model that was created um, in different ranges. This, as I said earlier, is one of the models of yesteryear range Y14. So this tells me that this was brought into the range in 1959. It had dark brown uh, body and green boiler with gold trim. This seems to be an earlier model which I have because it's got an unfilled gap and also the wheels are brown painted although the driving wheels seem to be kind of dark brown and the smaller wheels have got brown on one side and dark brown on the outside. The boiler door has been gold plated which looks in good condition so I don't think I'll touch that at this stage. Similarly with the base plate it's in good condition nice black or glossy black so I'm not going to do anything to that either. The website that I found this sheet on is called vintagebritishdiecast.co.uk Oops, and uh, it's got the yesteryears and the duke of .htm's web page for this particular model and I've found a lot of the other models which I've acquired they're also available. Well, I can see a huge improvement in the paint removal using this method. Um, definitely. So this seems to be the more successful of the two methods for this particular model. Was it the paint that caused the difference? Or, I don't know. Maybe the cheap. So I better say, better change that in case I get done for slander. A less expensive paint stripper. Wow, look at the difference. Virtually stripped clean. Just a few little shreds here and there. Let's have a look at the sides. Virtually clean along here, just a little bit there, and turning it over, being careful not to touch it. Wow, look at that! And that was in just a few seconds. So I know which method I think I might like. Yep, so caustic soda one, paint stripper, no paint stripper ain't doing too well. The next step seems to be to buff up the die cast a chassis. So I don't have a Dremel because it's one of the things that I don't use an awful lot but I do have one of these. It's a mini craft variable speed small drill and I actually purchased 
a brass buffing up head. It's quite noisy so I'll try not to speak during it and I'll see how it makes the body shell appear. Here goes. Well, it certainly seems to make the metal nice and shiny. So I'll carry on with that off camera and come back to you when I've done both pieces. The complex body castings has actually made it difficult to get into some of the nooks and crannies of this casting. So I haven't managed to do much in there. Uh, I don't have a brass brush um, so I'll have to try and catch one. This one has turned out a bit better because there's more surface area although I've still got one or two bits in there to clean up. There we go. And this allowed me actually to read the running number which is 3065. I've missed a little bit here as well. So those are the two pieces and hopefully they will sit in and will start to make it look more like a lot of mo locomotive. And it will be held in by these tabs here behind the second pillar. Bearing in mind that this is my first attempt with die-cast restoration and bearing in mind also that I'm not as experienced as the other guys on YouTube. I've got to the stage where I'm going to spray my models with a primer and I went down to the local shop, um, Ian, you might remember I talked about Ian, uh, and he suggested this thing here, it's called Mr. Finishing Surface 1500 Grey. Uh, I've never used it before, and in fact, until a few seconds ago, when I sprayed the back backing, just to see what it looked like, I've never actually operated a can of spray aerosol in my life. So dear knows how this is going to turn out but I'm willing to have a go if you're willing to watch me. So first of all with the lower chassis I'm going to shake the can a bit and apply my first ever touch of grey primer. Too bad. I've probably missed bits. I've got an awful lot on my tongue table as well. Okay, and now for the boiler and the cabin assembly. Starting off with the boiler and cabin assembly, that's not too bad. I thought I might put on too much but it seems to have settled itself down. I can even make out the running number, 3065, if I can focus it, it doesn't look bad at all. I'm using a hobbycraft paint and according to the cap 
is a green colour, gloss finish. So I'm going to just see how it goes. I think I'll just take this one out of the way. Right, uh, a vicious spray coming out. Try and get inside the cab. Just leave that and see if it will settle down. Darker than I thought it might be, but I don't think that's a problem. After all, I'm still in the throes of experimenting. For the chassis, I've got this plastic coat Fast Dry Project Enamel. Because I think the original paint was an enamel paint, which is why it's so difficult to get off. The complex uh, casting means I have to be careful trying to get it into all of the nooks and the cries. I think that looks quite nice really. So I'm just going to let that dry. Uh, this bit here which I seem to have missed will be covered by the, the boiler and this will be covered by the cab. I'll just give it a little touch. Okay, let's just leave those aside and concentrate on something else. I've touched up the green paint on the boiler and cab assembly and the brown paint on the chassis assembly and my next task will be just to hand paint the little gold trim. If you remember, the gold trim was in the axle boxes and in these two boxes here on the chassis. So for that, I've got the Tamiya X12. So that's what I'm going to use to apply to this. Again, you probably realise I've never used this particular paint. So I don't know what's going to face me when I open this up. There it is there. I'll give it just a little bit of a stir. It seems free enough. I got a very fine uh, paintbrush. So hopefully this should help. I'll just zoom in a little. And my recollection of the model is that these axle boxes here should have gold paint on them. There's eight of them. I'm sure you don't want to watch me paint all eight of them. So I'll come back to you when I've done that. That's the axle boxes done. 
I'll leave that aside to dry. The boiler house door, which if you remember, came out. And it just needs a little touch up. So I'm just going to just brighten up the front cover a little. Around the hinges and the handle. That should make it just a little bit nicer, hopefully, once that dries. There's always a danger of overpainting with your hand painting. Okay, I'll let that just settle. And finally the boxes on either side of the chassis. To go all the way down to the running board. As well as this piece at the front. at the rear. This time I may have overpainted. Oh dear. I just put some paint onto the brown chassis. Oh, paint onto the brown chassis that will have to be removed. And I think, finally, the chimney top. So I'm going to leave that aside and let it dry. In the meantime, This dome has been painted in a gold paint, so let me just try and hand paint this as carefully as I can. Nice colour. I'm thinking at this point that perhaps I should have masked off the chassis that I didn't want painted. So I'm learning as I'm going along. And finally, the whistle top. So I'm going to leave both of these pieces aside 
for a couple of hours and see how they look. So let's try and put this together. This fits in nicely into there and it's held in by these two tails. Now I'm not absolutely sure how I'm going to tighten them up so I'm just going to have a little experiment and that is just try and press them out the way so that I'm kind of trying to open them up so that they hold in neater. <clears throat> I haven't found any of you actually repla replacing this so I'm not quite sure how other uh, die cast restores go about this particular task so that's something else I can work on. I'll remove this screw and that will allow me to fit the base plate. To fit the base plate first of all I'm going to remove these two screws And then the wheels on their axles can be positioned. We're starting off with the driver wheels in there. I haven't really improved the axles because they're going to be hidden once the base plate is inserted. I just gave them a little rub with some brass wool. I really should have a stand here, shouldn't I? So, I'll just fit them in. And then the base plate is fitted on over the the axles and screwed into place. There we go. And the wheels, there we go. Now to fit the boiler door, there is a notch on the inside of the door cavity and notch on the boiler door assembly so those obviously line up and a little squeeze and that will just fit in fits in quite tightly and there we have the finished Duke of Cornet well not quite finished I need to fit the decals So another first for me, decals, apparently they don't need a lot of time, look at that, oh, left this one in a bit too long, it's actually come adrift from its backing so I have to be very very careful here so, touch of water in there see if I can very gingerly remove that at the very end of it, wrapping around the tweezers this isn't going to work very well so you literally need seconds. Wow, these are so delicate. Where's that other one going? Oh. I made a bit of a hash of that one 
because it's left it in far too long, must have nearly 15 seconds. Came away with the backing, tried to pull it out, split into two, and it won't join very well. However, it's my machine, and I can do what I like with it. The other one, looking good. Well, thank you for watching up to now. This is my first ever attempt at die cast restoration of any kind. It happened to be a locomotive, Y14, Duke of Connaught, a by match box, obviously. It's the 1130 scale, so it's almost N gauge, but just a bit larger, so it doesn't fit an N gauge track. It doesn't have a tender, because Matchbox never produced them. I've got a two light brown on the base and two dark green on the boiler. The gold I think looks good and the decals on one side, if you only look at one side, look perfect. I'm quite pleased by what I've done. I've learned a lot over the last hour or so. This has just been a tremendous learning experience. All the first I had drilling and tapping holes, stripping the paint. The paint stripper didn't work, the caustic soda did. Trying to spray with an aerosol can, not as easy as it looks. Hand painting the gold, that's another skill as well. And the decals, well, I'm going to have to practice a lot there. I was amazed at how fine they actually were when they come off the backing. Will I continue with this? You bet your life I will. There's so many more Matchbox vehicles out there. I've got a lot of cars, you've seen one or two of them. And I hope I'll be able to impress some of you eventually with my wonderful skills. Who knows? Marty may have to watch out. Although somehow I doubt it. Okay, until I see you again, take care everybody, bye for now.